Jeff Kennedy is with me. Inevitably, you will want to join the discussion. 96900 693 13 13 32. You're not serious what you just told me, eh? Uh, no. <laughs> yes. No. No, no which, certainly not. Which is it? No, certainly not. You weren't serious about no, your, no, no, your sir, hair? No, no, no. Oh, my hair? Yeah. Yes. You, you, you sell your hair? Oh, that part of our conversation. No, like, certainly not. Well, oh, I could. You cut your hair off, put it in a Neil and I were having a discussion to... about the. We were talking about the debate last night, and I was saying I was watching it with my usual glass of whiskey. And he said, You don't drink whiskey every night, do you? And I said, I try to. And he said, Oh, you shouldn't, it's not good for you. And I said, Well, look at my hair compared to yours. Neil, as you know, is grey going on to blossom white. I can see through and yours. Yeah, well, that's because I cut it short. I then said, I cut it short so I can sell it in matchbox lots, and he's just now trying to find out whether I do sell it. Well, you do some strange things. <laughs> <Yeah. don't you? laughs> I certainly do. All right, Essen, But that's fun, isn't it? It is fun. Essen, what are you doing? Uh, you Try might it. remember the first discussion we had, and it's what I've been consistently saying all the way through. With Essendon, there are two issues, duty of care, yes. and then whatever the quality of substances were. Sadly, for all those Essendon supporters and the code, the board at the time did not act quickly enough on the issue of duty of care. Yes. And had they done so, and had they stood James Heard down as he should have been stood down, perhaps till the end of the season, the majority of this furor would have all been over. Yes, we'd still have got this report with all this detail, which is ugly, but Essendon will have seen to have taken action. And it would only then be about the substance. Now, very sadly, David Evans, for whom I have a high regard, terribly honest person, got caught up in trying to do the right thing by the club and his friends within the club and yep. the AFL. He resigned. Paul Little, whom I know well, uh, he's been talked about as an aggressive person in the corporate sector. He has fallen for the old trick of a business person going into a football environment and leaving at the door the sort of corporate governance he would have practised while he ran and built up toll. So he shouldn't be defending them the way he no. is? No. Paul should have come in and stood down herd immediately. That would have been a line in the sand and allowed this to go but on. I'm now looking beyond James, sir, and I'm looking at the finals. Oh, yes. Because yes. as Adrian Anderson said earlier, there's now evidence that, or suggestion, that the drugs last, or that what they were using may have benefits beyond a yes, year. Yes, yes. That means you go into this final series, surely, with the club under a cloud. How can, why not suspend them now? I'm not sure that they still won't be suspended from the finals, and that may be the point of the President's meeting with the AFL today. Do you think they should be? Uh, yes, I think they should, because they've failed to act on the duty of care. I leave the other side to one side, and if I was an Essendon supporter, I'd be absolutely gutted to find and read what we saw yesterday. You also said earlier today that you believe Heard should go, and I think he should now be sacked. I think he's, it's, it's all about Jim, it's not about the players, it's not about the club, it's about Heard. But I suspect this legal action is about one thing. He wants to get on the record the truth about the conversation that Andrew Demetrio made to David Evans on the night before Asada said uh, a named incident. Andrew said it didn't happen. Heard said that no, he said his conversation, but he didn't give the information that uh, was alleged. That's what Andrew says. Yes. And Heard says differently, and there are others in the room, and I think that's what he's after. Uh, I think what will happen, Essendon will be fine, a large fine. A $2 million is just scratching the surface, so it will be yep. probably, should be about five. There will be a loss of premiership points for this year, I think. So they'll they be out of finals? They should be. Yep. And thirdly, apart from draft picks, not getting draft picks, Fourthly, I think there's a real chance that not that Essendon is out of the competition as you su suggested, but that next year Essendon, like the Melbourne Storm, will play for no points. In other words, they'll remain in the competition, they'll have to do a year of penance, uh, and then they will move on the following year to be competitive. Yeah, again. I, I, don't I don't disagree. I don't, I don't even want to out of the competition now. I want the finals clean. Yeah, I think the finals will be clean. I think that's the point of today's meeting. So. I Did think the president's really doing anything there, though. No, they no, no. They just sit there and do what they're told. And they will do what they're told. You just look at it for a moment. The one or two presidents there who are already in debt to the AFL Commission for reasons of uh, governance, uh, more than half of them are dependent on the AFL for funding. So no one is going to argue or put a different point of view. Can I also say, so yes, the presidents will right. just do whatever Mike puts up. And secondly, uh, I think the AFL have a lot to answer in the way they've handled this as well. And I don't think Andrew 
can possibly sit on the Commission to review this. I would rather have an independent panel because the AFL is a law unto itself. It is answerable to no one. There is no appeal from their decision. So well, that's fair enough. They're running the sport. They've got to run it properly, haven't they? They've got well, to be trusted to run it. But that's the trouble. I think there are too many conflicts involved, too okay. much conflicts with individuals. But you, well, do you, is, this, is Andrew Dimitri's job on the line? Uh, I think Andrew's career as leading the AFL is all but over. So I think there'll be a huge fallout of this, and then I think Andrew will move on to another job somewhere in the not-too-distant future. I think there's been too many contradictions in the administration of the codes and the standards of the AFL. He's had 10 years. I still say, as I've always said, 80% of what he has done has been excellent. He's been good for the code, conducted himself. But 20% increasingly has been questioned, double standard. It's a mate's game. And uh, okay. if you're in the club, it's fine. If you're not, and this is what's happened with Essendon now, it's a divorce. It's a bitter divorce between some very good, long-standing friends. So you think Andrew Dimitri might go to that tennis job we were talking about last uh, week? Well, uh, he could easily go there. Uh, is Gil McLaughlin a replacement for him? I suspect the AFL Commission have actually done a deal with Gil that stopped him going to the other code. I hope that is not the case. Not against Gil. The AFL so needs a curability to, agreement, is it? Almost. The mm. AFL needs a change of culture very, very quickly. The culture within the AFL, among the staff, is not good. Why? Hasn't What's wrong been, with it? Hasn't been for a long What's time. Wrong with it? They're just not a happy workforce. I speak to a number of people. They don't like the way the place operates. So it's okay. changed. My argument would be the AFL should advertise and seek the best person in order to change the culture.